Good morning, beautiful friends. Here we go again. Um, who remembers Bill and Ted's excellent adventure? Uh, they made two films uh, back in the late 80s, I think, early 90s. Uh, Bill and Ted, it was, it was a teenage romp. It was fun. It was silly. Um, but the catchphrase stuck with me. It was, be excellent to each other. Bill and Ted would uh, greet people with high fives and go, be excellent to each other, dudes. Yeah, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> I told you it was silly. But I got, it set me thinking. It set me on a path of thinking, which um, I've never recovered from. Um, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all be excellent to each other? We'd change the world. And then that uh, got me thinking about, well, why aren't we? Why don't we? And people would say, ah, it's just the human condition, you know, where it's in our DNA to be mean and, and nasty and we expect to be screwed. So we screw others before they screw us. And it's the uh, law of the jungle, man. Oh, it's a jungle out there. That's probably another one you've heard. I don't know when it started. Um, yeah, there's lots of different theories knocking about and I'm not going to get drawn into them. But it goes back, uh, even before money, it goes back to barter. We were all watching our backs and making sure we got equal to what we'd given. I gave him one of my chickens and he only gave me a dozen eggs. I got screwed. Yeah, I mean... And there with money is an example I gave recently. It's, so we can quantify everything now. It's so easy to be mean and nasty. We can put a number to everything. These bananas cost one ninety nine euros, pounds, dollars, whatever. Um, which really means I'm only going to give you these bananas if you give me one ninety nine, And I don't care if you haven't eaten for a week. Tough shit. I mean, that's not the way to live, man. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so how can we turn it around? How can we start living from generosity instead of from fear? Start living with love. How can we be excellent to each other? In a world where people aren't being very excellent to us. I mean, there's a clue that was given to us a long time ago by Saint Ignatius in his famous prayer, which I can't remember word for word. Um, to give and not to count the cost, to toil and not to seek for any reward. Of course, that wasn't what he meant. He was a Jesuit. He meant for the poor to give to the church and labour for the church and not to ask for any reward. But if we take his words literally and apply them peer to peer, we've got the road to freedom, haven't we? If we just stop keeping score, ditch the money because that's all money is just for keeping score, that's all it's for. Wouldn't it be lovely if instead of trying to keep up with the Joneses, we tried to help the Joneses keep up with us? That would be a revolution that would change the world. Be excellent to the Joneses. A 
And then people start accusing me of communism, which is ridiculous. So what's the difference between my ideas and communism? I'll sum it up for you in three words. No government involvement. Communism is where the government politicians and civil servants replace the role of the tyrant and become the tyrants. As in Orwell's book Animal Farm, it points it out, it, it's a perfect um, description of, of a communist regime. They say they're working for the people, and then a little bit down the road, you quickly learn that they're using the term the people as a euphemism for the government. And they don't give a shit about the people. No, I'm talking about a peer to peer system where we all have private wealth. But we're generous with it and we help each other. There's more than enough wealth to go around, more than enough natural resources. We just need to help each other to get it. Help each other to thrive instead of trying to thrive at each other's expense. I mean, Marx. He says some sensible things, not many. Um, he identified the problem reasonably well. It's just that his solution was unworkable. Um, and he identified the problem as uh, the ownership of the means of production. you own the factories, you own the machines, then you have the power. In my book I said, because I wrote my book back in 2017, uh, I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't think it would happen this quickly and I didn't think it was going to be this bogey bug that's been blown out of all proportions. Uh, and all the fear mongering around it. Um, but I knew something was coming. And I said that um, the thing that's going to take all our jobs is going to be robotics. And before that happens, we need to implement a new system where we all help each other. Well, the, the people that own the means of production have hold, hold all the power, aren't selfish and mean and nasty with it. But now something else has happened, hasn't it? It's, we've got to implement the system before. I thought we had years, I thought we had decades to sort this out, but we haven't. They're talking about before the end of this year, before Yule, before Christmas. Um, there's going to be a vaccine. And it will be mandatory. Because, of course, your vaccine won't work unless I've had mine. I mean, oh, and people fall for this crap. It's raining, but my umbrella won't work unless you put your umbrella up too. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's backwards, isn't it? It's, 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 it's lunacy. But anyway, it's coming. And it's not coming for the reasons that they say it's coming. And it's going to be really nasty. I hope it's not, I hope I'm wrong. 
I hope it's this great cure-all for, for the bogey bug, but it won't be. That's the mandatory bit that scares me. I don't mind you taking a vaccine if you want a vaccine, if you've done your research. As long as you don't mind me not taking one if I've done my research. It's freedom. That's what we're here for. It's when the fascists come along and say that everyone's got to have one. And the fascists are out now in huge numbers on Facebook and, well, particularly on Facebook, Zuckerberg, that's the main fascist, restricting the information that you have access to. So you can't make an informed decision. The BBC are out pushing just one side of the story and suppressing the other side. The whole mainstream media are in on this. As I explained in another book I wrote a couple of years earlier, uh, before the other one, um, it was called Rupert Murdoch's Hitmen, and it was all about how the media are involved in, involved with government and big business and the military complex to military industrial complex. to mould the way we think and the way we behave. So this has come as no surprise to me, if I expected this to happen, that we weren't going to be given the right to... Uh... Somebody said to me today, or said to me on Facebook today, they said, uh, is freedom a right or a privilege? And my answer was that the government make it into a privilege every time you acquiesce to one of their ridiculous demands. And you, we, together, make it into a right every time we stand up for it. One act of kindness at a time, one act of love at a time, one act of generosity at a time and one act of rebellion at a time. A peaceful rebellion, I'm not asking you to go out and kill anybody. Just don't do what the government tell you. So we've got to get this alternative economy, this free gift economy that I talk about in my book and all these videos. And we've got to get it going before the mandatory vaccines come out because at least the awakened people, I mean the woke people can go and do their own thing and disappear out their own backsides and um, have their own little totalitarian nightmare if that's what they want. But those of us who are awake, we need to start this uh, alternative economy, this free gift economy, informal free gift economy. And the informal, I, I use the word informal because no government involvement, that's what that means. Peer to peer. Um, there's all, there are two websites, and I think they're all over the world, these, they, what they operate. Um, one is called Free Cycle, and the other is called Street Bank. And it, they're websites where you can give away stuff that you've bought and you no longer need. Well, I suggest we start by using those websites and making stuff and growing stuff specifically to give away on those websites. I think that would be a brilliant place to start. And then the next stage up, if you've got a market in your town, an open air market, um, or an indoor market for that matter, I've done most things in my life, including a little bit of uh, market trading at one time. And most market traders give each other a discount. Well, what if they go a stage further and let other market traders take what they want for nothing, for free? 
And you can maybe have a, not everybody would want to be involved, so you'd have a little membership card maybe, you know, something you can put on your, on your stall to say that you're part of the scheme. And then you could rope in other people from the town, from the village. Um, maybe the local dentist who might uh, give you free dental treatment if you let him go to the market and get his food and his the other things you get from markets. And then a the whole village might get involved. So again, it might not be the whole village, it might just be a group within the village. Um, a group of awakened, enlightened people. There was a scheme years ago, I don't know whether it's still running, when I was in Kent. Uh, it, it was all over the world. It was called LETS, which I think stood for Local Economic Trading or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting confused. But it had a local unofficial currency, which in Kent was called HOPS. It's a big hop growing area, so they called it HOPS. And members of the scheme had a, a checkbook where you could pay in hops. And it was mostly alternative therapists, um, the alternative community generally, craftspeople. And I said, look, why don't we just tear out the checkbooks and give to each other for nothing? What goes around comes around. Yeah, they weren't ready for that. And I'm sure the majority of people on the planet aren't ready for it yet. But this was 30 years ago I was talking about this stuff. It hasn't only just hit me. But the, it was always the alternative people that were involved. And I think there are alternative people, um, awakened people, enlightened people, loving people who are ready for this such a, ready for such a scheme now. And I suggest we don't try to make it nationwide or worldwide at the moment. We just have little local schemes. And maybe they can grow and merge into each other over time. But what we need to do quickly before the mandatory vaccines come out, because the point I'm making is that they're not going to let us travel, they're not going to let us go to the shops unless we've had the vaccine. And people are going to starve unless we get this scheme going now. So start talking to your friends, get together, maybe just a street, get together with your friends. Those of you who garden, produce the food for the street. Those of you who don't garden, do whatever it is that you do to contribute. We all do something. We're, we're all good at something. To give and not to count the cost, this is the important thing. Stop bean counting. To give and not to count the cost. To not care who's winning and who's losing. To toil and not to ask for any reward. Well, I'm not talking about a barter scheme. I give you this, you give me that. No. I've got two of these, you haven't got one, so here, have one of mine. Well, if it happens to be. At the moment, I'm talking mostly about food and the essentials for survival. Um, but it could be anything. And I give to you, and you give to him, and he gives to her, and she gives to him, and he gives to her, and maybe she gives to me. That's the way it's going to work. No one's counting, no one's keeping score. What goes around comes around. And it has to be based on generosity, not on what's the minimum I can give, what's the minimum I can get away with. 
which is the nightmare world we're living in today. It's going to be based on generosity. What's the most I can give? It's got to be based on being excellent to each other. Namaste.